Hey, this is Paul Soltz, and I wanted to do a Kickstarter update for January. I know it's been a busy month for me, and I've been working on a lot of things behind the scenes, so I sort of wanted to give you some insight, some updates on what's going on. Uh, first and foremost, I formed a new company in December. It's called Super Easy Apps, LLC. This is registered in the state of New York, and it's really my, my sort of push into the online teaching. I think there's a huge opportunity here not only to help you, but to really help a lot more people get started with learning technical skills online and doing it in a way that's really gonna support you and provide more than just the, the coding skills itself, but provide a lot of the supporting skills that you're gonna need in order to create products and sell them on the App Store or if you wanna get a job, giving you the, the sort of team building skills that you'll need uh, to be highly successful in a job position. All right, so thank you for, again, supporting super easy iPhone apps. This is a brand new product. It is a work in progress, and the idea has been evolving over time. I, I initially started this with the thought that I'd just be teaching you the programming side, but then that sort of morphed into thinking more bigger picture, and that's what um, we're going to be getting into sort of moving forward. So I've got brand new websites that I want you to check out. The first one is supereasyapps.com. This is gonna be the blog website. This is where you're gonna uh, find new articles and stuff that I'm gonna be publishing on a more regular basis. And I'm still trying to get into a better workflow on that. Uh, then we've got the course content. This is a, a brand new website. It's courses.supereasyapps.com. So that's where you're gonna go to find all the new content. And then we've got the community site, and that's going to be community.supereasyapps.com. So moving all of this uh, content took a lot of time. Some of the stuff was a little bit manual and intensive. I had broken links, had to fix DNS issues, um, had to migrate websites. It's just, it's time consuming. So that's mostly out of the way. That was blocking me on a lot of stuff. So I think we're all set there. Uh, the other thing that I've been doing is I've been working and, and trying to hire some contractors who are going to help with the copy editing as well as the sort of branding, redesigning. And so this, again, takes a lot of time working with uh, people on that front. Uh, there's a lot of communication and communication, even, even communicating with you on Kickstarter. It's a lot of work uh, putting together an update and sort of keeping you in the loop. So I'm trying to make it a little bit more transparent as to what's going on, what new content is available. Uh, I, I realize that's probably the biggest issue I have is I film a lot of videos, but I don't always make it aware uh, what content has changed. So I'm trying to include that in this update and in future updates. So I'm, I'm sorry that I've been sort of a little slow. I'm still a single person. This is my studio space. So this is where I work. And it's it's me, and the <laughs> the slowest thing in this sort of business endeavor is me, just because I have to manage not only creating content but the business side of things. All right, so I really am I'm gung ho about this business. So like I'm here to teach you how to make iPhone apps. So if you have any questions, my email is paul at supereasyapps.com. All right, so that's the new email address, the old one. I'm still forwarding that. So if you're contacting me with the iPhone Dev TV, that'll still work. But moving forward, everything is going to be super easy apps. Uh, I think there's a huge opportunity to not only teach you how to do the coding, but also start thinking about your app idea from uh, just an idea perspective into are you looking to make money out of the app? If so, there's certain things that you need to start considering. There's certain things that you need to be evaluating um, to go down that route, your marketing effort and stuff like that. And this is stuff that I'm experimenting with Brew Coffee, which is an app that I'm working on and really um, trying to connect more with customers on that front. And so that sort of direct sort of teaching and like the marketing type of stuff that I'm going to be teaching is going to be directly influenced by what I'm doing online. So I want you to know that like I'm not just teaching you tactics uh, that I think would work, I'm gonna teach you tactics that do work. And so that's kind of, that's sort of the push moving forward with super easy apps is to not only provide technical insight, but also get you thinking about your marketing, your branding, your audience, and building that up before you launch in the app store. Uh, time management is also a hard one. When you work by yourself, you have to be self-motivated. You have to be managing your time. And like, that's something that I do struggle with 
uh, on a daily basis, but like I'm getting more disciplined about that. Like I'm, except for this week, um, because I'm helping with the Apple hackathon, I've been getting up around 5.30 or 6 to start the day. Um, the thing that I need to work on is making sure that I create content early in the morning because for me, I run out of, of brain power later in the day. So if I don't create content right away, um, I don't publish as much content as I should. And so that's something I'm working on. So setting up goals that are achievable, I think, is important. And that's that's something that I'm going to be evaluating this week. Um, the timeline is shifting. So my my original timeline was really focused on getting the content out as quickly as possible, which is doable. The thing I didn't account for was all the communication that I'd have to do with the legal side of things, the design side of things, the copy editing, um, and then the website migration. Uh, another thing that is a huge, a huge time sink for me are bugs. And I think moving forward, I'm going to be a little bit more open about the bugs that I run into. I'm going to be documenting them. I'm going to be submitting them. Um, there's, there's bugs with Apple's products. There's bugs with, um, my own code that I write. There are bugs with the software solutions that I use to sort of power the course website and things like that. And so anytime I run into those, that slows me down, um, more than I'd like, but I'm trying to get into a better workflow on sort of capturing bugs and then submitting bugs, uh, as two distinct processes so that they don't always hang me up, um, uh, moving forward. All right. So. Next week, I should have an update on what the, the timeline is going to look like for the course content. It's going to be shifting because I'm, I'm adding extra materials to this first chapter. There's currently six hours of content that I have in the course, and that's around 42 videos. Uh, and I'm, I'm working on some new stuff. So there's 13 new videos that I've published. They're about Xcode fundamentals. This is something that I've been wanting to publish for a long time, but it's taking me a lot of time to sort of think about what aspects I want to talk about. Um, and this, this sort of comes from my own experience working with the apps. And that's the, that's the, always the challenging part is a lot of this is based on research, um, as I'm using the tools and it's like Apple puts out stuff and they're like, yes, Xcode's really awesome. Um, but there's nuances with it and there's nuances with any piece of software that you're going to use any kind of app that you're going to use and your own apps that you're going to make. And you're going to run into bugs, you're going to run into issues, and I run into a lot of bugs with Xcode, um, and I'm going to be a little bit more open about that. So there's some issues within Playgrounds right now, so if you are familiar with Playgrounds, that makes them not the most ideal thing to use. Even though Apple's pushing them, um, it's not always the best thing to do because they're a little bit buggy. They're not as stable as a normal iPhone app. And so... I think where they're going is is the right approach, but it's not always the best solution. So I've got a bunch of videos here on when to use an Xcode project versus when to use a playground, um, how to debug your iPhone app using Xcode 7, how to know when to use the iPhone simulator versus a real device. And, and these are all questions that I get a lot, and I wanted to sort of formalize them. Um, another big one uh, for the lesson is really on getting help. And so this is sort of, this is where I'm trying to move into creating more value for you. A lot of students will send me projects and I can't run the code because there's files missing. And so I'm putting together materials to help fix those issues. So there's a correct way to share your Xcode project with me or with your peers or on Stack Overflow. And if you don't do that, you can't really get help because your code won't run and I won't be able to run your app. And I, it's really hard to figure out what's going on. So if you submit an Xcode project that works, then you can get help faster. When it doesn't work, then I have to let you know, okay, this doesn't work. And then you have to get back to me. And so if it takes you two days to get back to me, you get back to me. Now I'm backlogged with additional emails and stuff. So if you can get it working the first time, I can help you faster. And so that's kind of the content I'm trying to sort of highlight with the, the new materials. Um, there's also a tool that I think is really going to boost your productivity. That's Dash for documentation. Xcode and Apple are really dropping the ball, not only on the playgrounds right now, but on the documentation front. And that's, uh, that's sort of another pain point um, in making iPhone apps. So I've got uh, a new video coming out on using Dash, and that's going to help you really be more effective with your time spent. Uh, I also have a, a code exercise. There's a couple bonuses within the code exercise, and I'm working to really leverage the um, 
the community site so that you can post questions, you can post your solutions, uh, and really get feedback as you're working on. And so there's going to be a lot of links um, from the different video lessons to the community site so that you can post questions there. You can also post questions underneath the videos, uh, but it you have a code question, it's better to post that on the community site because you can format the code, you can share a Dropbox link, you can share images, you can share videos, um, and it really looks good on the community site. So I would highly recommend that, and I'm going to be including more links along with descriptions that go along with the videos. And this is taking a little bit of time to write, um, but I'm getting more into a, a writing workflow. So that's that's sort of what I'm doing. You can see the list, the full list of videos down below on this update. And in terms of up upcoming content, I'm hoping today that I can film some more videos on GitHub. That's the plan uh, after I do this update. And it's, it's using GitHub as an individual, and then it's using GitHub with a team uh, and how you can sort of manage that and avoid issues because there's situations where you can run into where you can make your entire team blocked on an issue. You can break your app so it doesn't work for anyone, and then it takes time to fix that. So really the goal moving forward is to make sure that it's easy for you to get help and that you learn how to back up your code so that if you do have a, a problem that you don't know how to recover from, you can go back to something that was working. Uh, and then other things I want to get into are app ideas. And this is sort of thinking through your app ideas. Um, but also, I think I want to inspire you with some of my own app ideas. So I, I've been thinking about this, and I think it's kind of a crazy idea. But there's there's two things that I'm interested in doing. I want to review apps that are on the App Store to sort of give you insights into how they're built or, or what features you could use to sort of mimic them. But I'm also interested in sharing some of my own app ideas. And these are app ideas that I think are million-dollar app ideas if you can execute them. And it all comes down to execution. So, And, and that's one of the things I want to be teaching you. So if you're interested in that... Um, I'm going to have some more stuff on app ideas, revenue models for apps. I've been talking with some of my students in the iPhone Mastermind group, and they've got some apps in the App Store, and they're not doing as well as they want. And I've got some ideas on how to improve them, and I think that's going to translate into some really good educational content to get you thinking uh, and not really wasting your time. All right, so um, that's pretty much the update I have for Kickstarter and Super Easy Apps, which is the new company. And the course is called Super Easy iPhone App. So it sort of fits underneath the umbrella. I am planning on doing more course content moving forward. And right now it's all about optimizing my pipeline. I do manage a ton of files. So it's, it's getting a good workflow. Uh, I basically just need to set up some standard operating procedures for how I'm going to put out this content and really document it. The other challenge that I'm going to have moving forward is I know Apple's going to be making some breaking code changes. And so one of the things that's been really important for me is setting up a set of procedures so that it's easy for me to recreate the content if Apple does break the content. And so I'm working to to really make it so the lessons are easier to re-record. Um, and so that means I have um, a, a perfect idea of what's in a video uh, a lot of times I, in the past, I would memorize code and I would just record. And if I messed up, I had to fix something in the next video. And that led to not always knowing what I talked about in a certain lesson. And so now going forward, uh, I'm providing the code that's going to be in sort of a lesson PDF that you'll be able to download. And that'll be at the beginning of a lesson. And that's going to really drive the lesson forward. So that's sort of your uh, cliff notes for the lesson for whatever section it is. And then the other thing is, is I'm doing some speed coding things. And these are all sort of things that have kind of evolved since I first released some of the content back in October. And so it's, a, it's an evolution of the teaching style, sort of trying to make it as approachable as possible for you, but also taking insight from my students what has worked in, in real teaching situations where I've taught in the classroom, um, and then some other stuff is some research I've been doing with Apple. And unofficially, Apple and I have been chatting at some meetups and stuff like that. Um, so they can't go on the record about anything, uh, and I can't quote them on anything. 
but there are certain things that I could do better that would help you uh, in terms of getting your app from a basic submission to Apple quality. And, and so that's one of the things that I've been talking to Apple about is what do I need to be teaching you and how can I be helping you get your app from down here to here? And it, if we're, we're talking about the Apple bar, there's a sort of minimum that you've got to get over. You've got to get over this hurdle uh, before Apple will feature your app. And so that's one of the things that I'm focused on. Um, and that's it's been sort of delaying my execution of recording content because I, I need to make sure that I'm positioning you correctly and I'm getting you to think through uh, not only your app ideas, but how you can make it so that your app will be potentially featured by Apple. Because that's huge. If Apple features you, they provide a ton of amplification for your app. Um, and it's it's really up to you to get to that quality, but it's also up to me to teach you the things that you need to be thinking about so that you can get to that level. So that's kind of what we're doing moving forward. And I'm really excited about it because I think it's gonna help you a lot more than any of my previous content. And I think it's gonna be probably the best resource um, for app development moving forward. It's just gonna take some time to really execute on what my vision is. All right, so thanks for watching. And I, I look forward to answering any questions. You can email me. My email is paul at supereasyapps.com. And you can also find me on Twitter. You can tweet at me. Um, if you have any questions, it doesn't matter if it's, a, if it's what you would consider a dumb question or not. Uh, I answer every question I get. Uh, I am a little backlogged on some of the older questions, but uh, I'm trying to stay on top of newer emails and then I'm working to catch up. So if you have a question, let me know. I am reading everything. It's just a matter of I have to juggle a lot of things. All right. So thank you again for backing this project. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your questions. It's very helpful in sort of directing where this is going. And uh, a last thing, I should have a new article. And this is an article that took me, I want to say three months to write. Um, but it should be coming out on InfoWorld on Monday. So we'll see if that happens. And I think that'll be a really good resource for you to, to learn more about Swift. So Keep your eyes out. I will be posting something probably next week in my next update about that actual article. All right, I'll catch you guys later.